Welcome to the Bayshore Podcast. As listeners each week, whether through iTunes or through the church app, you're part of our church family. We would love for you to share stories of how Bayshore is impacting your life by sending us an email at amen at bayshorecc.org. As always, you can find all kinds of information and content on our website, bayshorecc.org. There's also our church app, which you could download by going to bayshorecc.org slash app. So thanks again for joining us this week, and we hope that today's message is a blessing to you. Yeah, the uh, first thing they threw at me when I started working here was a beautiful Mac laptop computer. And uh, I said, do I really have to have one of those? (laughs) And Jeremy, I'm sure anybody would have loved to have gotten one of those, but I was not too computer literate. But I have learned over the years. I've learned over the years how to use my computer. So I'm I'm just so thankful to be here. I'm so honored. I, I love Pastor Danny. I love Pastor Jeremy. I love my bosses. They're my bosses. Uh, But I say I have one complaint about them, and I I hope they're not listening. I say, they make this look easy week after week after week. They make this look easy, and and it's not. But I'm excited to be here anyway. And, And I'm especially honored. I have a couple of my kiddos in the audience. Tara, Tommy, Abby, stand up for me. (laughs) Yeah, come on, stand up. They uh, Tara and Tommy were raised in this church 30 years, and he uh, Tommy just recently got married in September to our beautiful Abby Genshaw. We're so glad to have you in the family, Abby. And Tara, my daughter's married. Her husband's working, and my husband is home from. Uh, his travels. He, he works out of state, so my husband Tom Monroe is in the audience, so glad to have you. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. Um, I know, I want to say Merry Christmas. I know we all had a good Christmas, I'm sure. I had a wonderful Christmas with my family. As I said, they were visiting. And uh, I don't know about you, but I have a couple words about this time of year. And it's like this, stop the madness. Stop the madness of the cookies, the fudge, the candy, the eggnog, right? I I need to stop the madness. Uh, My daughter texted me a picture the other day. I thought it was so funny. I thought it clearly demonstrated how I felt and maybe how some of you can relate to this picture. Do you have the picture of the before and after? Yeah, (laughs) that's December 22nd, that's December 30. (laughs) And I don't know about you, but that's pretty much how I feel about now. (laughs) So I gotta stop the madness. And and another thing, I almost had, I had a bit of an accident right before Christmas. Um, My husband works out of town, I was home alone, and and I almost got myself into some big trouble right before Christmas. (laughs) I was sitting at my table, wrapping presents one night, and I had a big pile of presents, and I picked my big pile of presents up, and I was walking over to put them under my Christmas tree. But I I ran into something. Do we have a picture of that, what I ran into? Can you show who I... (laughs) I have an 85-pound golden doodle. And he was stretched out where he normally lays in my house. And it was right in my pathway. And I had my presence, never saw him. My foot went underneath him, and I went down like a redwood in the forest. I went boom, (laughs) straight down. Presence went flying. The dog yelped and ran away. (laughs) And I laid there by myself, falling flat on my face. And I thought, hey, I'm okay, I'm okay. And I just started to laugh a little bit and chuckled and got up. So uh, the Lord protected me from having a bit of an accident. Have any of you ever had a fall? Falling is not fun. And, and going face down is, is no fun at all. So I want to, uh, I'm just so excited as I start uh, my message. Pastor Jeremy talked a lot about 2020. And I'm excited for 2020. And he he reminded me, it's not just a new year, it's a new decade. Now, how exciting is that? It's a whole new decade. And uh, 
As we cross over into 2020, I am so excited to share with you a word that I believe God laid on my heart for my life, for my life, and I think he wants me to share it with you. A word, a beautiful word of hope and encouragement for the year 2020. I'm gonna start out by saying that I'm gonna predict your future. I'm going to predict your future. Now, I'm not a, uh, not a psychic, I'm not a medium, I'm not a fortune teller, but my prediction is 100% biblical. I'm going to predict your future, and mine too. Now, the Bible is full of verses about hope. The Bible is full of verses about hope, but there are two special ones found in Jeremiah, and, and I know you folks are probably familiar with these. Jeremiah 29 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you what? A future and a hope. And it continues on in Jeremiah. There's another scripture, Jeremiah 31. It says, Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, because there is hope for your future. So I'm predicting our future, that hope is in our future in 2020. My word today comes from one of my favorite books of the Bible. Now hold on, I, this is very exciting. My favorite book of the Bible is Deuteronomy. <laughs> Hate to say it, I'm, a, I'm an Old Testament lover. I love the books of the Old Testament. As you know, Pastor Danny has been doing a series of messages from the Old Testament called Mega Transitions. And I know you remember some of his good words because I've heard people repeat them. Remember, stay in your lane. You know, remember that word, stay in your lane? And then a couple weeks ago, he talked about God blesses taking initiative. He encouraged us to take initiative. Those were some words from the Old Testament. Well, God has given me this word of encouragement from the ancient book of Deuteronomy. And here it is. I'm going to boldly proclaim 2020 is going to be a blessed year. 2020 is going to be a year of provision. It's going to be a year of hope fulfilled. It is going to be a year of good things. It is going to be a year of needs met and blessings. I boldly proclaim that for our 2020. Thank you. Thank you for that amen. <laughs> Now, you're going to say, how can I say that? Um, how can I know this? Well, let's start my journey. Let's start my journey. Um, first, and, and stay awake with me here, <laughs> I want to give a, bri a brief background on the book of Deuteronomy and a little bit before it, because I'm an Old Testament lover. I've read it, and uh, I know you're going to be just as excited about it as I am. Um, now, I'm giving, giving you a disclaimer. I am not a Bible scholar, okay? I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm going to get my cough drop. Keeps my mouth from getting dry. Um, I'm not a Bible scholar, but I am a Bible reader and a Bible lover. So that's the authority I take here. Um, let's go back, first of all, to the book of Exodus real quick. Or I'm going to take you on a little history before I get to my, the main point of my word. The book of Exodus, in the beginning of Exodus, we find the sons of Israel, they were living in the land of Egypt. They had been led there by Joseph. And the sons of Israel were living in the land of Egypt. And they multiplied greatly. They just, their numbers multiplied greatly. The bad news is, they became enslaved by Pharaoh for a very long time. God tells Abram in Genesis 15, 13, God predicted this way back in Genesis. He said, Abram, your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will be slaves and oppressed for 400 years. They will be slaves and oppressed for 400 years. Also in the book of Exodus, some good things are starting to happen. God raises up and appoints Moses and his brother Aaron as his helper. God raises up and appoints Moses 
to lead his people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. The time has come for them to be led out of slavery, out of the control of the king of Egypt, out of Pharaoh's oppression. God raises up Moses to lead them out of slavery. And guess where they're going? They're going to the land of Canaan, the promised land. It says in Genesis, of course we all have heard, a land flowing with milk and honey. They are getting ready to get on the move. Let's go forward to another book I enjoy reading, hate to say it, the book of Numbers. <laughs> the book of Numbers is an interesting book. It records the winding 40-year journey of the Israelites from the land of Egypt through the desert as Moses is leading them to the land of Canaan, the promised land. Numbers is a record of the Israelites' journey of their 40 years in the wilderness. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in Numbers. Now, it's my understanding that the journey wasn't supposed to take 40 years. It was not supposed to take 40 years. But there was some trouble in the wilderness. And the people expressed some unbelief in God. And there was some disobedience. So there is a very sad verse in Numbers. Numbers 14.25. And this is just a bit of a side note. They're on their way. They're going to the promised land. Moses is leading them, but they run into some unbelief and some disobedience on the behalf of the people. And God says in 1425, a sad scripture. He says, turn tomorrow. Turn tomorrow and go back to the wilderness. Turn tomorrow and go back. It's a bit of a, I, I think that's a sad thing for those folks. So Numbers is the 40-year journey. They, they journeyed for 40 years. Numbers takes us to Deuteronomy. Now this is where it gets exciting, believe it or not. <laughs> Moses, it gets exciting. Moses and the people are now, after 40 years, they are poised on the eastern frontier. They are poised on the eastern frontier of the land of Canaan. They're getting ready. They're, they're poised on the frontier of their promised land. They are just about ready to cross over the Jordan River in the book of Deuteronomy, beginning of Deuteronomy. They wandered in numbers, and now Deuteronomy, they're getting ready to enter the promised land. There is a light at the end of their tunnel. Finally, there's a light at the end of their tunnel. This is the beginning of the word of hope that I, that I want to share with you. Um, listen, if anyone needs, if anyone needed a word of hope and encouragement, if anyone needed a word of hope and encouragement, it was God's chosen people, a word of hope for their future. It was this people, God's chosen people, the Israelites, just think about their situation. They had been slaves for 400 years, then they were let out, and then they wandered the desert, the wilderness, for 40 more years. Think about them. They were dry, they were dusty, they were in a barren land. They had little variety of food, they had manna and quail. They got their water to drink out of a rock on more than one occasion. They were constantly on the move. And most importantly, they experienced the deaths and the loss of their loved ones and family while in this wilderness time. A whole generation of this people passed away. Their family, their loved ones died in the wilderness. They, it was, it was hard living. Their life was hard. Listen to their experience described in a Jeremiah 2.6. Let's see. Jeremiah, listen to what it says. 
And they did not say, where is the Lord who brought us out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and deep darkness, through a land that no one crossed and where no man dwelt. That is not a happy time. That's, that's tough living. Maybe some of you, maybe some of you can relate to a little bit of this wilderness experience. Maybe some of you have felt like you've been in the pits a little bit. You've been feeling a little dry in your spirit, a little dreary, a little bit unfulfilled. Maybe you've experienced some disappointment. You've suffered some lack and some loss. I know some of you have experienced the death of loved ones like the Israelites did. Maybe some of you had some sadness and some depression and and you've lost your hope for a better situation. Maybe some of you are not at that place. You've had a great year. 2019 has been a good year for you. Well, I believe the word of hope that I have for us today is for all of us. I wanna read to you God's beautiful promise of hope and provision for the Israelites. A promise and a hope and a word for their future. And I think it is the same word of hope and promise for our future today. It is for today, it is for tomorrow, it is for next week for us, and it's definitely as we cross over into 2020. Listen to these words, this most beautiful word of hope and promise. Guess where it comes out of? Deuteronomy 8, as Israel is about to do a mega transition from the wilderness, from the slavery, from the dry, barren land, they are about to do a mega transition into the promised land. And bear with me as I read a little bit. Listen to this beautiful promise. Think about these people, what they've experienced, and then think about the word God gives them. He says... For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land where you shall eat food without scarcity, in which you shall not lack anything, a land whose stones are iron and of whose whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. Lest when you have eaten and are satisfied, have built good houses and lived in them. When your herds and your flocks multiply, your silver, your gold, all that you have multiplies. Then your heart becomes proud and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out from the land of Egypt. He led you through the great and terrible wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. He brought water for you out of the rock of Flint. I'm almost finished. In the wilderness he fed you manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to to do good for you in the end. Otherwise, you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth. What What a contrast. Don't you see that? From where they were to what God was about to do for them. And that's so exciting. I think that's, that's so exciting. The story goes on a little bit. In Deuteronomy, um, Deuteronomy 9, 1 through 3, it says, Hear, O Israel, you are crossing over the Jordan today to go in to dispossess nations greater and mightier than you, a people great and tall, the sons of Anakim, 
whom you know and whom you have heard, who can stand before the sons of Anak? <clears throat> know therefore today that it is the Lord your God who is crossing over before you as a consuming fire. So they're getting ready to go. God's going to lead them into the promised land. It's exciting. It's an exciting word of hope and promise for their future. And then uh, I'm almost done reading here. It continues on in verse 10. Uh, chapter 10, verse 11. Okay, they're ready. They're standing up. They've got their coats on. They've got their bags packed. They're, they're ready to take that first step. God says to Moses in chapter 10, verse 11, Then the Lord said to me, Arise, Moses, proceed on your journey ahead of the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swore to give to their fathers, to give them. They're ready. Arise, Moses. Stand up. Here we go. We're crossing over into the promised land. The most interesting thing I find, though, as it continues on in chapter 10, he gives them a plan, a hope, and a promise. But in chapter 10, verse 12, he gives them a call. He gives them a call in chapter 10, Verse 12, did I get my call? Oh, there's my call. God gives them a call. God gives them a call. <laughs> Thank you, sound man. <laughs> They're getting ready to cross over. They've got their promise. They've got their plan. But wait, God gives them a call. What kind of call? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it's a call to commitment. It's a call to commitment. Verse 11, he says, Moses, get ready. Here we go. We're going into the land of milk and honey. Verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and to keep the Lord's commandments, his statutes, which I am commanding you today for your good. God gives them a call. Now you might think, well, that's nice. Okay, he's got a call. You might not understand what that means. What does that call mean to me? It's a call to commitment to release his plan of blessing and goodness and provision. And I am going to break this call down for you, and I'm going to make it real simple. This call to commitment, guess what? Good news is it's not rocket science. It is not rocket science. I like to tell of a fella I knew who wanted to be a rocket scientist, and I married him. <laughs> My husband, uh, sometimes you see him singing, but you may not know he's a brilliant man. <laughs> he wanted to be a rocket science scientist. He went to a prestigious high school in New York City that you had to take a test to get into. He um, went to an even more prestigious engineering school in upstate New York. I'll try to say it. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and studied engineering. He had a political appointment to go to the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, but they found out through their testing he was colorblind and he had glasses, and that knocked him out of going into the Air Force Academy. See, he, he's, a, he's a smart man. He's worked for General Electric Company as an engineer, Delmarva Power as an engineer. I'm bragging on you, dear, because <laughs> I only see you a couple times. Um, <laughs> I get to brag on him. He's a smart man. He uh, worked for General Electric, Delmarva Power. He worked for ILC Dover, which in Frederica, if you know that, that company makes the NASA spacesuits, the spacesuits that the astronauts wear to go up uh, in the NASA program. He was on the glove division. And some of his products that he worked on are in the International Space Station right now. So he's a smart fella. <laughs> he's working now. His project, he told me, 
multi-billion dollar project, a utility project, or a little bit over a billion uh, project that he's working on with his company right now. So I'm just bragging on my husband, I'm proud of him. But I say all that to say, the good news is my word is not rocket science. My word is none of that. My, rock, my word is so easy, even I can understand it. Um, God's call to commitment. How do we answer this call to commitment to release his blessing in our life? I'm going to break it down into three simple steps that I believe Deuteronomy um, said as I read. Three simple steps how to answer God's call to commitment to release that blessing in our lives for 2020. Here it goes. Number one, love him. Love God. Simple, love God. And I know we've all heard that and you say, okay, I know how to love God. My encouragement is, is a simple one. How do, you, how do you share your love with someone in your life? How do people know that you love them in your life? Simple, you tell them. You tell them you love them. I encourage us today to take a simple step to increase our frequency of telling God how much we love him. Just say, I love you, God. I love you so much. You're the best thing that happened to me. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I tell him that often. And I believe that that just opens an intimacy. That just opens a source of intimacy between you and the Lord more and more. You might say, well, that's, that uh, is kind of forced. I don't really feel it. I don't want to be, you know, not authentic. I'm telling you today, I know something about you. If you're here in this church, you love God. You love him. I know you do. And I encourage you just to speak it to him more and more. Open that door of intimacy. I love you, God. I want you men to say it, and I want you women to say it more and more. Tell the Lord how much you love him. I, I like to tell a story. Uh, um, my son Jeffrey is a uh, baseball fan. He likes the Yankees. And so we watched the Yankees play uh, for a while, sorry to say. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they play, their rivalry is who? The Boston Red Sox, right? Now, there's a player on the Boston Red Sox who has an interesting nickname. He's one, he was one of their stars. He retired. Anybody know it? What was that? Big Poppy. Big Poppy. Thank you. I love that nickname. Guess what? I started calling God. I love you, Big Poppy. I love you. <laughs> You're my Big Poppy. I love you. And I truly believe it just opens that door of intimacy between me and my Heavenly Father. I love him. Praise him. Praise him. My friend Holly Hudson, uh, she told me a little story. Holly, if you know her, she's, uh, she's logistics. She's get the job done. She's, you know, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. One morning she was driving her van for work before the sun came up. She told me she was sharing some things with the Lord. Lord, I got this, and can you help me this? And Lord, I need this. And she heard God speak very clearly to her, very clearly. She knew without a shadow of a doubt, he said to her, Holly, your job is to praise me. Your job is to praise me. So that goes along with that love. Tell him you love him. Praise him. Thank him. Say, Big Poppy, you're the best. I love you. That's number one, step one. Number two, simple steps. Simple step. Serve him. Love him, serve him. And I have some, some interesting takes on serving God. Um, not your usual, maybe. Serving God, I think, equals, it's a, an equation. Serving God equals serving people. Serving God equals serving people. I encourage you, as you serve God, as you strive to serve him, it's not this thing that's way out here that I have to go to another country and, uh, you know, live in a tent and be deprived. <laughs> serving God equals serving people. And I'm going to tell you one easy way to do it. Make a new friend. Make a new friend. Someone who, who might not feel connected in. Someone who might seem a little lonely. Make a new friend. 
I, I know I've made so many new friends working here. I, I got a friend, my friend Teresa. Where are you, Teresa? She and her husband Merle, we've been hanging out. We've been to dinner, shopping. We, I've made a new friend in Teresa. Step out of your friend zone a little. Make a new friend. Include them in to activities. Include them in. Guess what? That's serving God. Another thing, serving God. Um, this is just sort of a thing I notice. Become a better listener. Become a better listener. I think the greatest gift you can give to someone is to listen to them. Become a better listener. Uh, I know a lot of we women especially, we like to talk a lot. <laughs> I say encourage you. Close your mouth a little. Open your ears. Become a better listener to the people in your life. That's a gift you give to people when you allow them to share their story with you. When they can share their story with you, that's a gift you give someone. I'll tell you somebody who's really good at it, and we all know and love him, it's Pastor Danny Tice. You think his gift is up here preaching every Sunday, and it is. But you see him out in the lobby. He is talking, he is listening. He is listening to new folks. He is listening to older folks who've been here. He is listening to people's stories. That's serving God, letting someone share their story with you. Um, I think that's a gift you can give someone. And then my third thing for serving God, and Pastor Jeremy touched on this very well, here at Bayshore, we can make it real easy for you to serve God. <laughs> If you want to sign up today out that front lobby, give me your name, your email, your phone number. Say, I want to serve God. We can make it easy for you. Real simple. You serve the local church, you're serving God. It's right here. The opportunity to serve the Lord is right here in this church. I know our children's ministry could use people who will spend an hour there once a month. They would love it. My parking lot team, I got back here, they're so awesome. And Mr. Irv, we could use more people once a month. That's serving God. Serving your local church is a way, a simple way you can serve the Lord. And the third, the third step to answering that call to commitment, it was love him. You're going to tell God you love him more. You're going to Shut your car radio off. I challenge you. Turn your car radio off when you're in the car and start singing. <laughs> sing. I can't sing worth a lick, but I sing and I say, I love you, God, and I thank you, God. I challenge you to turn your car radio off and tell me about it. I would love to hear. You said, yes, I'm trying it. I'm loving on the Lord at that time when I'm driving. I'm telling God how much I love him, how much I need him, how much I, I need him every second of my life. I can't do a minute without you, Lord. So we're going to love him. We're going to serve him. We're going to make a new friend. We're going to become better listeners. And, and we'd love to sign you up to be part of our team here at Bayshore on the volunteer team. The third one, love him, serve him. And it said back in Deuteronomy, keep his statutes his commandments, his testimonies, and do them all. I'm going to break that down for you. To me, that means read his word. How can you keep his commandments, his testimonies, his ordinances, if you don't know what the word says? I encourage you, break open this book and read his word with a heart and desire to obey it. I've been reading this word for 40 years now. It is the secret to my, <laughs> to my happiness, to my contentment. This word is alive. I just want to tell you that. I know you know it. It is alive. It's a secret to my success. Um, you know, my husband is away. <clears throat> he's been working away for almost five years. I see him, and he's my best friend. He's been my best friend for 36 years. But he's been away for the past five years working. He has a good job. He likes it. It's okay. I'll tell you what has kept my head above water. This living word. You know what the word says in Isaiah 54? For your husband is your maker 
whose name is the Lord of hosts. I have called out to my heavenly husband, and I have just sensed my relationship with him grow and become more intimate because he is my heavenly husband. <clears throat> There's so many other good scriptures in here. Uh, Joshua, chapter 1. Joshua was a soldier. About four times, God tells Joshua, chapter 1, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for I am with you wherever you go. I've had to say that to myself as I've lived alone. Jody, God commands me, be strong and courageous. Don't have that pity party. I'm the only one who comes, and it's no fun. <laughs> Be strong and courageous, Jody. And I can stand on that word, and that has motivated me and helped me. This word is alive. It's a word of hope. It's a word of uh, wisdom. It keeps my head above water. It um, adjusts my attitude. If I don't have such a good attitude, I read this word, and I read a good scripture that the Lord pierces my heart with. And I say, thank you, God. Um, there's so many other good words in that living word. So we're going to love him, serve him, and we're going to read his word. It's a word of hope and life. I am coming to the end. I believe that this promise, what I do with my glasses. Exactly. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I believe that this, this promise of blessing, this word of hope, in Deuteronomy 8, is for all of us today, and for 2020 especially. You know how I can say that? It's interesting. When our Lord Jesus, after he was baptized, the Spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The Spirit led him into the wilderness, and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, he became hungry. And in Matthew 4.4, 4, it says the tempter came to him and said, Okay, Jesus, if you are the Son of God, I command that you turn these stones into bread. You know what Jesus' response was? Guess what? He reached back into the book of Deuteronomy, believe it or not. Deuteronomy chapter 8 that we just read, Deuteronomy 8, 3, he said, Satan, man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. If Deuteronomy is good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me to get hope and courage for my future. We were never meant to live by this alone. Does anybody want to live by bread alone? Does anybody want this to be their sustenance for the rest of their life? I don't. Jesus said, we were not meant to live by this alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and that is found in his word. You know, uh, Second Peter says, Exceeding great and precious promises are given unto us. That's a lot more than this dry bread. I want those exceeding great and precious promises given unto me. That's what I want to live by, not dry bread. In closing, I want to tell you the exciting end of the story. There's an exciting end to the story of the Israelites. The Israelites must have answered God's call, his call to commitment, to love him, serve him, and keep his word. Because listen what it says in Joshua. Joshua 22:43. So the Lord gave Israel all the land which he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they possessed it and lived in it. And the Lord gave them rest on every side according to all that he had sworn to their fathers. Verse 45, not one of the good promises which the Lord had made to the house of Israel failed. All came to pass. 
So the Israelites must have answered his call because they received all the good promises that the Lord promised them in Deuteronomy 8. Will we answer his call? I have a funny story about my son. He doesn't know I'm going to share this. <laughs> my son, before he got married to our lovely daughter-in-law, Abby, worked on a tugboat. And uh, before he was dating her, he would call his mama. And we would have leisurely calls and talks. How are you? Everything okay? He'd tell me stories about the tugboat. It was wonderful. Abby came into the picture. <laughs> and he fell madly in love with this beautiful redhead. And he'd be on his tugboat, and I'd be having my phone call with my son, having a nice call, and all of a sudden he'd say, Mom, I gotta go, Abby's calling me. Talk to you later, bye. And I'd be like, Okay, honey. Well, thanks for calling. <laughs> that happened multiple times. Got to go, Mom. Abby's calling. Bye. Click. And I, I, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. And my hope and desire is that we would be as quick to answer God's call as my son was to answer the one that he loved, the call from her. Will we be as quick to answer God's call? He loves us so much. Um... I'll close with one of the most important things I'm going to say today. For 2020, 2020, this is going to be our motto. 2020, I will not take time for God. I will make time for God. That's our, our motto for uh, 2020. I will not take time for God. I'm going to make time for God. And folks, I promise you, I've lived it as I've answered that commitment to love him, to serve him, and to read and keep his word, good things are coming, blessing is coming, fulfillment is coming, needs met are coming, hope fulfilled is coming. Blessing for 2020. Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me, and I know it's true for you. And um, if you don't have a Bible, we have Bibles in the back. They're free, to, free for you to take. Take one, they're free. Start reading. Pastor Danny likes to say, start reading in the book of Mark. Then maybe move to Acts and Luke and John. Start reading this living word. Um, and if you haven't taken that step to make Jesus Lord of your life, your savior, I did back as a freshman at the University of Delaware. Some friends shared the Lord with me. I took a baby step of faith this big. I said, okay, I'll pray that prayer. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what it all means, but I will pray that prayer. Jesus be Lord of my life. And my life has never been the same. So I encourage you as I close in prayer, if you haven't made that step to make Jesus Lord of your life, and as you do that, the power to release God's goodness and grace and blessing will come. Thank you so much. Let me close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this time. Thank you that uh, I got to share my heart and the word that I believe you wanted all of us to hear. And I pray, Lord, I pray that 2020 would truly be a year that we make time for you. Daily, weekly, we will make time for you, Lord, and we will grow in our love relationship with you. We will see you more clearly and hear you and obey. Thank you, Lord. And I pray for those who have not taken that step to make Jesus Lord of their heart, that they would say yes to you right now, this day. Take that baby step of faith where doubts may be greater, but there's faith there. Say, yes, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. Thank you. And if you've made that commitment, tell someone. Thank you, Jesus. We ask your blessing. Amen. Thank you so much.